Exodus chapter 35. And I'm going to put it on screen too. And I'm partial to King James Version. I'm partial to King James Version. Um, and so what I'd like for somebody to read is verses one and two. And then we're going to um, give me verse one and two. And I want to say something after verse one and two. Who will be my reader? Exodus I'll read. Chapter. All right, go ahead. Verses one and two. Do you want me to read your King James Version or my study Bible version? It's, it's whatever you want to read. Okay. I'll read my study Bible version. Yeah, why don't you, yeah, why don't you read your study and I'll come back on verse one and two behind you with this. Okay, so um, verse one, Moses assembled the whole Israelite community and said to them, these are the things the Lord has commanded you to do. Verse number two says, for six days, work is to be done, but the seventh day shall be your holy day a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it must be put to death. Wow. Can you just stop right there and just ponder that? In whatever translation that you're reading from, any mm -hmm. translation, that's hard. Now, let me give you this in King James Version, as, as we have it here on the screen. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together, Notice all the way through this, this particular chapter, it's all about togetherness. I'm big on family. I'm big on spiritual family. We can't get nothing done if we are not cohesive and together. And that's what is this, this chapter is really going to highlight for us. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. Amen. I know it's corny, but I'm going to say it again. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. Amen. No man is an island. You're not going to get nothing done with just, it's just me and my family can get it all done. No, it takes all of us. That's what we're going to see in this text today. Moses said, I mean, uh, the word of God says, and Moses gathered all the congreg all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, these are the words which the Lord have commanded that ye should do them. Look at this verse number two. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be, uh, on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Here's the consequences for disobedience. Whosoever doeth work, when I said don't do no work, whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. So there's no gray areas. And the reason why I really wanted to pause right here and share some things, um, uh, 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 let's see, with you on this. Let me see, how did I learn how to do this? I saw it. Uh, let's see. I want to share another, and I did this so smooth for practice, but I can't think of what I did. So, um, a new share, there it is. All right. So I want to, I want us to understand the law was no joke. Number one, the law was no joke. And so um, what we just read at the end of verse number two, if you don't do it, that's the, that's the thing about the law. If you don't obey the law, it's automatic. It's an automatic death sentence. And so the law was under the old covenant. Let me make sure I give me a highlighter down here. The law was under the old covenant. And so uh, let's see. So the law under the old covenant was known as the law of sin and death. And so I took some time and made this little graph for us to understand that and be able to appreciate that we're no longer under the old covenant. Under the old covenant, it was the law. 
and I hope everybody can see my diagram. And what the law does is it increases sin. I want to see if I can see y'all at the same time. I got all kind of stuff going on. And uh, let me quantify that statement. The law increases sin. And the law kind of works like this. When a church, a person puts you under bondage, anything is in our human nature for somebody to say, you can't do this. And what we going to do? We, it's our nature to do what people tell us you can't do. That's just human nature. So if you're walking under the law, that in actually it increases sin. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So that's, we just read in verse number two, that if you disobey God under the old covenant, under the law, it's an automatic death sentence. There are no gray areas. And that's why that law is known as the law of sin and death. In other words, under the law, if you sin, you die. Okay, so once again, John 10 and 10 says, uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So under the old covenant law, it increases sin. And uh, the wages of sin is death. So, and there was no... Uh, gray areas, automatic condemnation. You sin, you die. Sin has a payday. Sin pays wages. And again, this is under the old covenant. This is also before Jesus Christ came. So it was automatic condemnation. So now we look down here where we're living in now. Thank you, Jesus. We are under the new covenant. And this is known as the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We're living in a time of grace, thank you, God. Grace imputes righteousness to us. And it freely gives us life. And there is no condemnation to those who are walking under this law. Now, before we go further, in Exodus... Uh, chapter 35, I want you to write down these two scriptures, Romans 8. Romans 8, verses 1 through 4, because I got to explain these two laws, Romans 8, 1 through 4, and Galatians chapter 3, verse 24 through 29, and we're going to fly right through here. Romans 8, Verses one through four, and I want somebody to read that for me. Romans eight. I want to contrast for you these two laws, the law under the old covenant that we're reading about tonight and the law, it's two laws and you choose which one you want to walk under. So I give me a reader, glory to God for Romans chapter eight. Okay, and I think I got that somewhere too. Romans 8 and 1, 1. Verses 1 through 4. Okay. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. For the law could not do. Oh, glory. The law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. And verse that four. The righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. 
All right. And I want to run by that again because we're contrasting the law of Moses uh, to the law of life in Christ Jesus. Therefore, here we are. We're, we're, we're under a new law, the spirit of, of life in Christ Jesus. And it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. You got to know that you're in Christ Jesus. Those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Watch this. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that's where we are, have made me free from the law of sin and death. That right there is a place to praise him. For the law because you're going to be under some kind of law. You're going to be under some kind of law. It's going to work. It's like gravity is a law. If you go up to a high building and jump off, that law is going to be enforced whether you want it to or not. And so subconsciously, or, 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 or let me put it like this, either you're aware of it or you're not. It doesn't make a difference. You're walking under one or another law. And verse number two says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. I'm free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, what did he do? He condemned sin so that we don't have to be condemned. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so we are free. The law, amen, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. That's why I don't understand why anybody would want to go back and walk under the law. And I got to have us read one more thing. Uh, I, I want us to see Galatians, and I did not have this one, so I got to search for it real quick. I want us to look at, because somebody might say, well, why did God even make the law? Why, you know, that's a very, that's a legitimate question. If we couldn't keep it, why was it made? Uh, I believe, amen, people like Kristen might want to know, because that's a, that's a good question. Once you start learning about the law and you see that this is a law that, of, of, of sin and death, then why did God even make law? Why did he make the law of Moses? And the, the answer to that is, is uh, for us, Amen. To learn that we, first of all, we can't keep the law and that we are in need of a savior. You know what the law did? Sister Kristen, back then under the old covenant, the law would show you that you were sinful. The law could show you that you had dirt on your face. You had a dark smudge on your face or you had a thingy hanging out of your nose. That's how the law was. The law could say, you got a, a, a boogie hanging out of your nose, but the law could only show you and put a mirror up and say, you see that boogie hanging out of your nose? But the law could not do anything to clean your face, to clean your nose. Does that make sense, y'all? The law could only show you that you are a sinner in need of a savior. I wish I had a church here. Now, I think this is going to, this is going to, uh, oh my God, Sister Kimberly got it. That's why I don't want to walk under the law. The law condemns you. The law is black and white. Either you do and live, if you mess up, you die. That's why uh, Moses said, go tell these children. Uh, God said, don't do no work on the seventh day. It's a Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Rest on it. And if I find anybody working, clipping your toenails, come on, somebody, it's automatic death. You better sit down and behave. You remember how the old folks used to say, it's storming outside. What they tell you to do, sit down and what? Shut up. God is doing his work. Get over in the corner somewhere and sit down. 
So this, and, and, and why do we study this law? To show us just how free we are. To, to show us, you know, that the law was the schoolmaster. That's where I want to go right now. So some people, here's what some people do. They say, well, we're under grace now. We're under the new covenant. It's not necessary to study the law. It's not necessary to read the old covenant. Oh, yes, it is. Amen. We study the whole counsel of God. We study the old so we can have a better understanding of the covenant that we are walking in now. Oh, my God. You can appreciate that Jesus said, you know what? That old covenant didn't work. I'm coming. I'm coming in the likeness of sinful flesh so that I can uh, usher in a new covenant. A better way. Nobody could uh, uh, do the law. None of us. The law is there to let us know we need a savior. So let me get this text right here. Galatians. Hallelujah. I'm going to put it up on the screen. I got so much going on tonight. And yes, we are in Exodus 35. Amen. By way of these two scriptures here. All right, let me get a reader here. This is this is good. This is Galatians chapter 3, verse 24 through 29. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But Stop after right that there. Faith Stop was... right there. Stop right there. I know it's hard. I can't hardly see y'all. Uh, here's the reason for the law. Verse 24. You know, people say, well, why is there a law? Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. And it was designed to bring us to Christ. It was designed to let us know we're dirty. Our righteousness is as filthy rats, said the Bible, the scriptures. And, and we are in need of a savior. So wherefore, the law was the schoolmaster to bring us. Here's the whole reason right there. To bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Read. But after that faith has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. Stop right there. Let's, just take these, the uh, let's take these one verse at a time. But after faith has come, now we're under faith. The law was the schoolmaster. It was designed to bring us to Christ. And now that we are under faith now, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, which is the law. Let's Okay, one verse at a time. Go ahead. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Read. For as many of you as have been baptized into the Christ, into Christ have put on Christ. Stop right there. there now, this baptism, hold on, one verse at a time. This baptism is not water baptism. I hope y'all taking notes tonight. This baptism is not water baptism. I, I, I want to say this. The water ain't never saved nobody. I want to tell you the water, amen, there's no salvation in the water. The salvation is by faith through Jesus Christ. And so when we confess Christ mm -hmm. and invite him into our lives, we are baptized into Christ and we put on, literally put on Christ. So this is not water. And I want you to understand water ain't no salvation in the water. I, I can't see nobody's face, but I'm going to teach this like the Holy Spirit is giving it to me. Your mm -hmm. water baptism is a symbol. It's symbolic. Amen. Uh, for your relationship that has been established with your Christ. So it's, so when you confess Christ, you are baptized into this family. Verse number 28, one verse at a time. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. Yes. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Come on, is that so good, y'all? There's not, uh, there's neither Jew nor Greek, nor bond nor free. There's neither male nor female in this thing. Why are we trying to uh, 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 make uh, such divisions and isms and schisms? 
ain't no male and female over here. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And finally, verse number 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All right. So going back, and I hope y'all took notes to help you understand what the law of Moses was designed for. It was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, to let us know that we are in need, amen, of salvation. Glory to God. And now that we are in faith, we have no need to go back under the schoolmaster. Amen. He just led us. Amen. Like the when we were young, going to school would be crossing guards and stuff. They just lead you across the street. Amen. And then they go on back to the other Amen. side of the street and we go on. Ain't no sense in going back to the traffic guard. He done already led you across the street. Oh, I, oh, I wish I had a church here. Amen. Okay. All right. Now, before we read any more verses in Exodus, we contrast it the law of sin and death to the law of the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus. That's where we are. We're under his law. Any questions about that? Any questions? Come on. I feel like there's some questions about that law. And, and, and if you, if you just understand you're not under the law of sin and death, amen. We're under the law uh, of Christ Jesus. Any questions? Any comments there? All right, then. Uh, let me get a reader. I don't know what I did. I don't know where my notes are. I have no idea where they are. Let me get a reader for Exodus chapter 35 verses. Uh, verse 3 through 9. I wrote it down somewhere. Verses 3 through 9. Do not say? light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Verse 4. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, this is what the Lord has commanded. Verse 5. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Mm. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen, mm -hmm. goat hair, ram skins, dyed red, and hides of sea cows. Mm -hmm. How do you say that? Axiot? You're on your own. You got your own translation. The, 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 uh, the Axiot wood, verse number eight says, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil. And for the fragrant incense, um, verse nine, and and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted onto the the ephod of breastpiece. All right. So we all know this is getting ready to be the making of the tabernacle. They got the plans way back there. And that ought to speak to y'all right there. You know, you get the plans first. God said, I know the plans and the thoughts that I think towards you, but we don't walk right into it. He done prepared them. Preparation comes before execution. Here, I hear the Holy Spirit. Watch this. It's three stages to our giftings and our callings. The first stage is discovery. Uh, the next stage is development. This is noteworthy and I don't see nobody but a couple people taking notes. The first stage is, de is, is discovery. You discover. The next stage is development. You develop that gift that plan that God has laid out. And the third stage is deployment. You move out. Too many people go from discovery to deployment. 
and they don't do anything with the development, the training. You know what? I'm, I'm going to just let the Holy Ghost speak tonight. That's why we have people that are in, in their giftings and they don't, and their character wasn't ready. Come on, y'all. That's why we got so much stuff going on in the church because you went from discovery straight into uh, a deployment. You didn't allow the Lord to develop your character. Come on. You didn't, you didn't allow the Lord to give you long suffering, no development. And that's why we got so many leaders in the church doing all kind of stuff and the ungodly acts because you know what? We got all these gifted people with no character. I just feel God, y'all. I feel God. So, I mean, you cannot, that's, that's like even with David. David was called, amen, when he was tending to sheep as a shepherd boy. He was called as king, wasn't ready to walk into the de uh, to the deployment part of it until he went through development. Glory to God. So again, uh, the plans are here. Now they're getting ready to execute the plans of building the tabernacle. All through this chapter, you're going to see the necessity of us doing it together. And watch this. You're going to see all through this chapter that if you got a stinking heart, God don't want you building, amen, helping to build something that's holy. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. And that's why he emphasizes in this chapter over and over, only you that have a willing heart. All right. So, so look, it, and look, it's going to take all of the people. He said, bring offerings. Y'all bring offerings. It's not for one person. Everybody, we got to do this. We got to build this thing together. All right. Any comments right here before we go further? Teamwork. Teamwork. Yes. This is the mind of God. He wants all of us working together. You can look all through scripture. When they begin to build up the wall of Jerusalem again, it took all the people. He put families together. People that had like skills were together. We're going to do this together. We're going to battle together. Elder Shirley said, we're going to cry together, laugh together, love together. We're in this thing together. Anybody that has a mindset, any leader, let me say that, any leader that has a mindset that they don't think they need nobody else, it's the wrong concept. Amen. We got to do it together. Verse 10 through 15. All Verse 10 through 15. Artesian among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. 11. The tabernacle, its tent, its covering, its clasp, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets. 12. The ark and its poles with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering. Table and its poles, all its utensils, and the showbread. 14. Also the lampstand for the light, its utensils, its lamps, and the oil for Ooh, the light. You. Yes, Lord. 15. The incense altar, its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, and the screen for the door at the entrance mm. of the tabernacle. My God, the screen door, y'all. My God from glory. Any interjections before we go on and get a reader for 16 through 21? I just want you to know, and I'm going to reemphasize this tonight. It's up to all of them together, the whole body of the children of Israel. Bring what you can. Everybody, and you know what? I want you to understand and see this, that your gift is is necessary in the house of God. We, we, ain't none of us got the same thing. Some brought onyx stones, some brought purple, some brought 
None of us are doing the same thing. None of us have the Amen. same gift. Psalm is Christian. Bring your Amen. gift and sing us into the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 Elder Daphne, bring your teaching gift. Amen. None of us teach, you know, under the same anointing. Whatever it is, um, uh, Minister Melvina, your gift for exhortation and, and uh, 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 encouragement, bring that in. Bring all those in. Uh, uh, Sister Kimberly, your fiery testimony rocks the church and sets us on fire and gets us ready for the glory of God to fill the house. Bring your gifts. Everybody bring your gifts. You know what they are. And they all work together for the glory of God. Somebody give God. A, I just feel God. Hallelujah. At one point while she was, uh, while uh, Sister Irene was reading, I was about ready to cry. Glory to God. Amen. Come on, let me get a reader for verse 16 through 21. Verse 16, the altar of burnt offering with his brazen grate his staves and all his vessels, the laver and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and their sockets and the hanging of the door of the court. Yes. Number 18, the pins of the tabernacle and the pins of the court and their cords. Hold on, even the pins y'all, listen, nothing is to be devalued in the house of God. I don't care what little task you do, amen. It's all to the glory and the honor of God. Don't forget yes. the pen. Yes. Pens are a little bitty thing. And just guess what? Even that little bitty minute thing, if you forget the pens, the whole thing, the plans are all messed up. Every little thing, every gift is needed for the body. Oh, glory, come on. Uh, verse 18 again, the pins of the tabernacle and the pins of the court and their cords. 19, the cloths of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron and the priest and the garments of, of his sons, the ministers in the priest's office. Mm -hmm. verse, verse 20, and all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Now watch this now. They got their marching orders. Amen. Please don't take none of this. You everything we read, we want to see how how we can apply this for today. Moses, amen. The words of God is in the mouth of Moses. And the people, amen, are to eat those words. Get your marching orders. They got their marching orders. And now it says in verse number uh, 20, and the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Read, reader. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up. Yes, Amen. And everyone whom his spirit made willing. Yes. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garment. Now I want you Amen. to look back at verse number 21 and begin to dissect it. And here you will hear the heart of God. What does God want? It says, and they came, everyone, if you got a paper Bible tonight, everyone whose heart was stirred up. Amen. Come on. And, and and you know he don't want nothing else. I don't I don't want disgruntled workers. Amen. I Amen. wish I had somebody. Amen. I don't want no angry, disgruntled, uh, uh postal, postal. I don't want none of them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I ain't offending nobody. <laughs> but you know, I'll get no my point. What you say? <laughs> Is it postal workers out there? Workers. We need y'all for <laughs> y'all go through a lot. The dogs be barking at you, uh, biting your pants, legs, and everything. We love y'all, but y'all know it's a, it's a saying, you know, going postal. 
But look, God said, I want everyone, and this is what I want y'all to underline in your Bibles. This is what God wants, people who are stirred up. Uh-huh. Every time, and you shouldn't let nothing get stale. Amen. You hear me? Bible study should never be stale to you. Coming to church should never be stale. Hearing the word of God, how could it be stale when God has given us fresh manna? Manna that comes from heaven. So he wants people that are, and then Paul would tell Timothy, amen, if you get like that, then stir up your own gift. Stir up the gift that's in you. Stir it up. So God said, I want people who are stirred up I, and everyone whose spirit is made willing. I want willing people. And what did they do? They brought the Lord's offering to the work uh, of the tabernacle of the congregation and for his service and for the holy garments. So it's three categories of people I see. Willing hearted people. And there's also wise hearted people. Yeah. Stirred up people. Amen. To bring their gifts to the Lord. This is what they're doing, y'all. Their heart is willing. Nobody had to beg them to, to use their gift. Nobody had to beg them to sing a song. Nobody even had to pay them. Oh, I wish I had somebody. But we're just willing. Where are the willing ministers now? I know I'm going to make some folk mad, but I, I've i been in, in church so long. I've I, I, I been in long enough, amen, to see when keyboardists and organists used to just play because they, cause they love God. And you know, the music was anointed yes. because yes. it was from a willing yes. heart. Yes. Oh, I wish I had somebody. But now, yes. amen, Lord. it's a job. <laughs> amen. I got to have no less than, you know, they, they say it's a prime time. I talk to musicians. We we don't have a musician for the most part. We've never had them. They and I've talked to some. They said, Well, is it prime time? Prime time for musicians is, is morning worship. If you got an afternoon service, they may not charge you. But prime time, amen, it costs a lot of money. But I, again, God said, I want folks ministering in my house. And we have to balance the message, y'all. Y'all go on and balance it. But from the heart of God, I don't see pay in here. I just want somebody that's willing. Anybody got anything to Amen. interject right here? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever. You, you know, know, back what? in. Go ahead. <laughs> back, uh, back when I was going to church, you know, we would stomp our feet and clap our hands. That was our, that was our music. Yes. Yes. And the saints used to tell us only what you do for Christ will last. Christ you will know, last. Exactly. Down. That, that just stuck down in my heart. That's in my heart. And so mm -hmm. God is wanting people that are willing. Um, any other interjections before we go to the next set of scriptures? Pastor, uh, I got a question. Yes. Are you on live? Yes, I, I hope I am. I cannot find you. Okay. All right. Well, everybody else is out here. Go to my page and I'm going to keep, well, I hope I haven't lost anybody or I hope we haven't lost the broadcast. It looks like it's out there, but anyway, I don't want to be distracted. So try to find me and give me another reader now for verses uh, 22 through 29, please. Twenty-two. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold, jewelry, and all kinds of brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. Ooh, they were present. They all presented their gold as a wave of offering to the Lord. Verse twenty-three. Everyone who had go back to twenty-two. Yeah, okay. and take it slow and tell me what you notice in there as you read your version there. Just 22. Go ahead. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold, 
jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. Now, I'm going to ask you, Sister Kristen, since you are reading on verse number 22, what jumps out to you there? Thank you, Sister Cassandra. Willing. All right. All right. So all Anybody? men and women that were willing. Yes. You know what jumps out to me? Anybody else? Both men and women. And there women. it is right there. <laughs> not all women. Not I mean, all women. Not all men. That's this right. Both, we read in Galatians, there is neither male nor female. We read that, male right? Male or female. So take mm -hmm. all of us, me, look, as, no, I ain't going to do that because somebody really uh, tuned me out. It takes everybody, men and women, men and women. Women, bring your gifts. Men, bring your gifts. Men, stop trying to shut down the women's gifts. Men, and women. Women. This is, you know what? We got jobs and jobs say we are a equal opportunity employer. Opportunities. It's how's how's that go, y'all? Help me say it right. Uh equal what? What's E E O C? Equal e opportunity employer. Yes. Amen. Now, how about God? Oh, he man. is a what? Equal, equal, equal. Not good same. God, I cannot equal opportunity. opportunity. He gives all of us the opportunity, right? Amen. He's an equal opportunity. We're going to say employer. Okay. Verse 23, verse 23 through 29. Okay. Verse 23. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skin, dyed red, or hides of sea cows brought them. Verse 24. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord. And everyone who had axius wood for any part of the work brought it. Yes. Verse 25. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun. Blue, purple, or scar, scarlet yarn or fine linen. Y'all understand right. that? Like sewing, spinning. They, you know, mm -hmm. they were skilled. Okay, go ahead. Verse 25. And mm -hmm. all of the women who were willing Gifted. and had the skill spun Woo! the goat hair. Yes. Verse 27, the leaders brought onyx stones and the other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. Uh-huh. Verse 28, they also brought spices and olive oil for the light and yes. for the anointing oil yes. and for the fragrant incense. Komosha, hallelujah, go ahead. All of the Israelite men and women who were hey, willing. Hey, hold on, y'all. Just that just that just does something for me right there. Start again at verse Amen. number twenty-nine. All of the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offering for all the work the Lord through Moses and commanded them to do. Now, come on, y'all. Let's have a little bit of talking on here. This is good, y'all. Amen. What y'all got to say there about them? Come on. Free will offering. Mm-hmm. Willing. You, you didn't have to pull mm -hmm. them in there. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They was happy to bring it. They Absolutely. was happy to. Happy. Absolutely happy. Couldn't have been done without them. Couldn't have been done without yes. them. And that's, you know, the way we liken that is our gifts that God has given us. We want to use it. We want to work now Amen. while it's day. We don't want God to say, I gave you this gift. Why didn't you use it? Why didn't you bring it willingly to the house of God? And listen, I want y'all to know this too. This particular text deal, dealing with all this giving, it deals with the tithe, 
It deals with uh, the talent, the time. Mm -hmm. It requires all of that. Time, talent, mm -hmm. and what's yeah. that other one, y'all? Treasure. It dealt with their money. They had to make investments. It dealt with their skills, their mm -hmm. gifts, their time, mm -hmm. and their talent. And God said, bring all that willingly and offer it to me freely. And then in the New Testament, say, freely you have been given, freely give. Have I got Man, anybody in here that, 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 that this word is coming alive tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It speaks right. to me a lot too because I sing in my, you know, worship and stuff in church, and it just makes you feel, you know, I can't say appreciated, but it makes me happy to share my gift. Absolutely. Amen. And I'm telling Amen. you, just looking at this word, I don't want to take nothing to the grave. I don't want to get before my father, the king of kings. And he say, mm -hmm. I gave you such a beautiful gift. Why was you, why did you let fear? Come on, y'all. Let's make this real. Yeah. Why did you let yeah. fear paralyze you when I gave yeah. you this gift to be used? Amen. Why did you use it willingly? Your gift is not for you. I'm going to say that mm -hmm. again. Your That's gift good. That's is good. not for you. Mm -hmm. Your Amen. gift is for the body, the work of the ministry. You can find that over in Ephesians chapter four. Those of us that are in the fivefold ministry are a gift to the body of Christ. Amen. All right. All right. Some of y'all look like I'm, I'm, I might be losing y'all tonight. Let me get a reader for verse 30 through 32. Pastor Kim. Come on in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your, mic, put your phone down a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, um, in, 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 I mean, this whole chapter 35, I'm looking down here at 29, and uh, in the King James Version, it says, the children also brought a willing, they were willing to give too. So that, that you know, bring up today, we have to also train our children to to uh, have a willing heart, not uh, uh, what you call a stingy heart. And that, that's very good. A, a, a stingy heart. And like I said, the, the word that keep jumping out is willing heart. In, in other words, God said, "Well, if you if if you're gonna if you're gonna be mad about it, sad don't about it, it, I don't want it. So you might as well keep it to yourself, cause He's not gonna honor it. And mm -hmm. that's what my mother always told taught us: if you're not giving from your heart, don't do it. So mm -hmm. this, this this what this whole thing is talking about. And I also noticed since the rulers, the rulers brought. Every day they have the more expensive. Uh, uh, to um, whom much is given, much more is required. Yeah, yes. they, they bought the stone. They bought the the the, the expenses, really expensive now. So uh -huh. you know, and bring up today. I was sitting here, like I said, listening and, and reading, and I think about my jury, and I said, now if I was back there, my earrings and my diamond, you know. But these people was willing, and 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 seemed like to me, I just could see them going in their jury box, just taking it, taking off their earring and their neck, and say, "Here, take all I got," you know. And like I said, God didn't ask for just certain certain people to give; He asked for everybody, the whole Israelite congregation. He didn't say the men you do bring this; He just said all. Oh, Together. So that's what this is uh so important 35 is to me. It is to me likewise. And you made a very good point that to whom much is given, much more is required. And we understand that, you know, the higher you go up, the more God expects from all of us. And he addresses the whole body as the children of Israel. That's the whole congregation. And he did make some specifics. 
even though the call was put out to them all, it 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 was def, uh uh it slimmed down to those who are willing, those who are wise, those who have a uh, again it goes back to that willing heart whose heart is stirred up. In other words, you've heard the word. And if the word stirs you up, then you act on the word. And that also reminds me that many are called, but few be chosen, few are chosen. We see this concept again in the book of Acts. You know, when the, uh, the New Testament church was being built, everybody had everything in common. Everybody bought all of their stuff to one location and they had everything in common. So, um, Absolutely. We got to do this thing together. It also remind me of the, um, the, in the, in the New Testament, with the, the lady that gave the pennies and uh, she gave what she had from her heart. She didn't have a lot, but she gave what, and, 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 and like you, what was so important is, like you said, the body of Christ. The, 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 the arm ain't no good without the, the shoulders, all the Every part, every gift is needed to to build the house of God. So God. If, 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 if one thing and the other one, that's it. And I ain't got nothing to bring to her. If I can, if, if she's singing, I can clap my hand or encourage her or, or get into the service, then it's no good. We all need each other to, for yes. the, to carry on. But we have to have a willing heart. We can't be lazy. And 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 the love of Christ is all have to be about the love of Christ in us to do what God had called us to do. Amen. Amen. Well said, Elder. Anybody else? I Come on. Some. Come on. It also reminds you of the scripture that God loves a cheerful giver. Yes, Lord. So, you know, working the offering, you see people just throw the money, you know, here. You know, just, and, but you, and you might as well could have kept that. I mean, thank you for, you know, contributing to the church and the house, but, you know, God likes a cheerful giver. Right. So, we can't be uh, mad about giving. Mm. And some people, or they think you, they're doing you a favor. Right. <laughs> you know? right. Uh, right. I would say with that, the most important part of that, I'm with you, uh, uh, Elder, that uh, God don't honor. I don't care if you mad about giving to the house of God or giving to the Lord. And you mad of God, I don't care if you give millions of dollars. God's not going to honor it because the heart is not right. Okay. The motive ain't gonna be right, so you might as well keep it, cause he don't honor it. Come, come on, uh, Minister Melvina. Hey, Sister Danielle. When I see when I when I say this, I think about willing. I put myself in, in this willing category, and willing is saying to me, no problem. My pleasure. I don't mind. God is willing to give his son, so I'm willing. I want to give and I want to do it. That's what willing means to me. Yes, yes. Willing, willing. God gave his best. Amen. So I don't mind. I don't Amen. mind. My Amen. God, glory. Sister Kimberly, anything to interject here before we go further? I knew we'd get through this pretty quickly. Hallelujah. All right, then uh, let me get a reader for verse 30 through 32. 30 through 32. Hi, Sister Danielle. Hi, Pastor. <coughs> We're in Exodus 35, chapter 35, and I need a reader for verse 30 through 32. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Ura, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise 
curious words. That's real in gold and in silver and in brass. All right, he was wise. Go ahead. You stop at verse 32. All right. So again, that was verse 30 through 32. And that word devised curious works means he just did, he did beautiful. He was skilled. Beautiful words, beautiful words. And my final reader is coming from uh, verses 33 through 35. 33 through 35. Yeah. Come on, Sister Mary, verse 33 through 35. Verse 33, and in the cutting of stones, and set them, and in carving of wood, to make any manner of cutting of cutting work. 34, 34 says, and he hath put in his heart that he may teach both he and a whole a, liar. The son of A of Go the ahead. tribe of Dan. I like it. Then hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cutting workman and the embroiderer in blue and in purple and scarlet, and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work. All right. Thank you all, all of the readers tonight. Thank you all for coming in. Bible study starts at 7. If you can get in as close to 7 uh, as possible, we usually try to strive to be live by 7, 10 p.m., Thank all of you for coming in. Um, anybody want to interject? Amen. Any comments? What did you, you know me, I'm like, what did you get out of this? What hit you? Um, again, you know, to me, for me, the whole chapter, the emphasis for me was the togetherness. God wants us to do this thing together. Amen. And through the eyes of God, all he sees is willing workers. He don't see your anatomy. I'm going to say that again. Amen. He didn't say you had to have a certain type of anatomy to do this. Y'all didn't hear what I said. He said, all I want is willing workers. Amen. I want people who are stirred up. Amen. Stirred up to do, to do the work. I'm reminded uh, of Nehemiah. It said the people had a mind to work. Amen. That's what God is looking for. Amen. And, and we must understand whatever it is, the, the, the most minute thing that we do for the house of God, we do it as unto the Lord. I don't care if that's changing the liner in the trash can. This is God's okay. house. Everything God is watching. He said, behold, I see it all. I sit high and I'm looking low. I'm looking at how y'all walk over stuff in the house of the Lord. I'm look, not just in the house, just everywhere you go. You know, he's seeing, he's beholding it all. So everything we do, it is for God. The, the most, and be faithful, be faithful. Here's the problem we have in, and not in, in our church, but just in Christendom at large. People get tired of doing what, uh, their assignment is and they get to looking over at somebody else's assignment and want to start doing what somebody else is doing I see that I see that I see it in our house it's just it's it's a it's a uh, it's a body thing you know you can't be faithful to what you were called to do you want to get off off of what you were you supposed to be doing you got marching orders to do this and you got now you tired of doing that and you looking over and you want to start doing what somebody else is doing that's where train wrecks begin to happen that's where tra traffic jams and everything gets messed up be faithful 
to the thing that God has called you to do. Unmute your mics, y'all. I want to hear from y'all. What did y'all take? What did this was powerful to me? What did y'all get out of this? I'm gonna After say, no. Uh, go ahead. Minister, I, I got out of the work together work and iron sharpens iron. Yes, yes, absolutely. Come on, Elder Daphne. And uh, you know, the people didn't care who got the credit. They brought what they had. They brought what they had, and every they didn't care about what so and so was bringing. They brought what they had, and they didn't complain. Even in the last verse, it says, you know, God put His Spirit on them, the Spirit to do it. So mm -hmm. the understanding, the knowledge, nobody knew how to do anything. <clears throat> they brought what they had first, and then My God worked it out. Mm. My God. And so, you know, I, I've heard it was Bishop Tyson, not James, but uh, 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 not Jay Laverne, but his father. Many hands working make the load lighter. Amen. You hear what I'm saying, y'all? Yeah. Many hands working make the load lighter. And that means yeah. any leader. Moses couldn't have done that by himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. And it, 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 it didn't make sense for Moses to do all the work. Mm -hmm. But they undergirded that work and helped him. So mm -hmm. take that lesson away. Yeah. Is my leader, ask yourself, is my leader doing all the work? This is what we study for. What can we take away from that? What can we begin to implement in our life? As we see these scenarios, we're looking at leaders and people. What am I Amen. doing to make my pastor's load lighter? That I'm just going to put, you know, I, when I study the word, I try to take away, how can it, what can I implement? I don't just want to be a hearer of the word only, a doer. but I want to be a doer, doer. of the word. Amen. Anybody else? This is, a, I'm done teaching. This is for y'all. I learned that the uh, faith and baptism, that baptism is not of the water, but baptism is confess Christ. Yes. I learned that, I learned that tonight. And the three D's, discovery, development, and deployment. Ooh, wow, that's powerful. I want to make sure we got that clear on the baptism. There's no salvation in the water. Yeah. There is yeah. no salvation uh, in the water. Yeah. Water don't save you. And I'm not minimizing baptism because I love baptism baptism in Jesus name but if you think that's going to save you the Bible said we are saved uh, by faith through grace it is the gift of God not of us lest any man should boast it's not the water the water is just your sign your symbol letting people know that me and Jesus got a thing going on well you know uh, uh, a pastor Kim, a pastor Ray used to say, only thing you do is you go down and talk about everyone. Some people, some yeah. people. Baptism, I don't I don't want to minimize it. You know, it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a ceremony. But if you haven't had, if you ain't baptized into the body of Christ, then you are going down, as they say a dry devil and coming up or where anybody else want to have any takeaways from this lesson teamwork makes the dream work yes now how can y'all make this practical how can you what did you get and what what will here's the word should change you it should challenge you and it should change you what are you going to start doing? What can you, what little changes can you make based on just what you learned here tonight? Maybe I shouldn't have put it like that. Anybody else got any takeaways? <laughs> <laughs> just leave it like this. The word should challenge us and then it should change us. We should be able to find out. Now, I done, I done learned all of this. Now, how am I going to execute? Got the plan. 
Now it's time to execute it. Anybody else got anything else to say? And I'm not going to hold you. It's 837. Uh, sure. I learned uh, about uh, the heart stirring up uh, in verse 21. Uh, they had a willing heart uh, that they brought what they, what they thought that the Lord would like. No, not what they thought, but they did it willingly. Yeah, they brought it willingly. But you know what? You bring up a very good point, though, because a lot of people bring stuff that they they leftovers, and, and I'm giving him this. I think he might, uh, I'm giving him anything. So you make a, a good point. We want to bring what the Lord said bring. If he said bring a tenth, then we don't want to bring, uh, 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 what is it, three-fifths. We want to bring what he prescribed. I know y'all don't like that part right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Praise God. And you know what? In the time that we live in right now, the way God said for us to give a tenth, it's even for everybody. So no matter what you know you have, it's even for everybody. If you got a hundred, you bring a tenth of that. If you got a thousand, you bring a tenth of that. If you got ten thousand, you bring a tenth of that. So, well, listen. Thank you all. Thank you so much for showing up and being uh, interactive in the class tonight. I hope this chapter blessed you. And if the Lord should say the same, we'll be back here next Wednesday. I'm on about. I get on about six forty-five, and I send for y'all about six fifty-five. I usually get about four declines, amen, and then y'all come in at 7.30 and 8 and 7.45 and 8 o'clock, try to get here on time, God wants us to have an excellent heart, if you're working, I get it, I get it, I understand, so uh, let's see, we're going to ask Elder Shirley if she will dismiss us in prayer, thank you all on Facebook, uh, Patricia Hudson, Cassandra, Danielle Doss, Leon Hubbard, Kelvin Prince, uh, all of you that, Pat, Patricia Kelly, all of you that are out there, we thank God for all of you. And hopefully Exodus chapter 35 has been a blessing to you all. It has been a blessing to me. Elder Shirley, please dismiss us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our teacher, dear Lord Jesus. We thank you for hearing the word, the teaching of the word, dear Lord. Let us not only be here, but Lord, put in our heart to be a willing heart to be doers of your word. Lord, we ask you in the name of Jesus that we want to come up higher. Uh, yeah. just, just higher, dear Lord. So we can be a, 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 a light in this dark world right now, dear Lord Jesus. So but once again, Lord, we thank you until and keeping us safe until we meet again. Dear Lord, we thank you for every household that was on Zoom. We thank you for Zoom itself, dear Lord. We thank you for everyone that was on Zoom and had the willing heart because we know we learn about the willing heart and togetherness so that they can hear your word, dear Lord Jesus. And we pray, dear Lord, that some may be saved. And from hearing the word on Zoom, dear Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you until we meet again, dear Lord. In your name, we give you all the praise and the honor. Amen. 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 Love you guys. Love you. Have a blessed Bye -bye. evening. You too, Bye -bye.